Okay, so for this problem, we need to solve an inhomogeneous equation. And the first step in always doing so is to first solve the corresponding homogeneous equation. So we need to make sure that we solve y triple prime plus 3 times y double prime minus 4 times y is equal to 0. So we're going to have an auxiliary equation of r cubed plus 3r squared minus 4 is equal to 0. If you graph this on a calculator, you will notice that it's going to cross at r is equal to negative 2. So we'll use synthetic division to divide. And be very careful in this problem. You will notice that it is missing a term. So you're going to have to have a 0 in that place of the r to the first power. All right, so bringing down our terms, negative 2 times 1 makes negative 2. Add that to the 3 makes positive 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Adding 0 and negative 2 gives negative 2. And then negative 2 times negative 2 makes positive 4. So we get a remainder of 0. So we know that our first value of r is equal to a negative 2. And we've got r squared plus r minus 2 equals 0 for the remaining part of our polynomial. And that factors as r plus 2 times r minus 1 equals 0. So r2 is negative 2 as well, but now r3 is equal to a 1. So we know that our homogeneous solution is c1 e to the negative 2t plus c2 t e to the negative 2 t plus a c3 e to the t. And so now when we form our particular solution, and actually those are all x's because this problem was phrased with x instead of with t, so let's go and change those all into x's to match the same independent variable as a problem. So again, these are going to be x's, so that is y of x, negative 2x, negative 2x, and e to the x there. And, of course, that variable there is an x as well. All right, so now if we look at our forcing term up here, our e to the negative 2x, you'll notice right away that it's actually one of the terms in our homogeneous solution. So we need to make sure we break the independence. But we already have an x e to the negative 2x as one of our terms as well. So we have to further go ahead and break that independence one more time. So we're going to actually have to have an x squared be our coefficient function on our solution. So this is the generic particular solution that we need. And now we have to use undetermined coefficients to go ahead and solve for A. So we have a lot of work to do because we need to go in and take many derivatives for this to work out. So our first derivative, yp, and again, that's a x. I don't know why I put a t there, but it's always fun when you got the wrong variable in there. And it's even more fun when you can't erase it. There we go. Now it's gone. All right, so there we go. yp of x. All right, so now first derivative using product rule, that's 2ax e to the negative 2x plus ax squared negative 2 e to the negative 2x, which is going to be equal to a negative 2ax squared plus a 2ax, and this is again times the e to the negative 2x. Now, that's the first derivative. Now we've got to find a second and, yes, a third derivative as well. All right, so let's go through now and find the next derivative. We're going to have a negative 4ax plus 2a times the e to the negative 2x. And then we're going to have a negative 2ax squared plus 2ax times a negative 2 e to the negative 2x and then when we combine like terms on this we are going to have it looks like a positive 4a x squared if we multiply back here these two terms together so again 4a x squared 
And then we're going to have a negative 4ax getting together with a negative 4ax back here to make negative 8ax. And then we're going to have a plus 2a as well from the first, and that's times an e to the negative 2x. So in the next video, we'll take the derivative of this again, and then we'll substitute that into our differential equation.